Hey man, what's happening, y'all? Congratulations on the big dub Burgundy and Gold Nation. Oh, this is my, my Sean Taylor jersey right here. You feel me? But I'm just coming to y'all with a quick report. Just want to talk about the recent guys that the Burgundy and Gold are bringing in for a workout, a tryout. And before we get to that, I have to announce that I did get the They Nervous shirts done. Chase Young! Y'all, I told y'all Chase Young is that dude. They nervous! They nervous! Dang. But it's not just shirts, it's long sleeve shirts, sleeveless shirts, hoodies, the face mask, wall canvases, stickers, coffee mugs, bags, baby onesies, even have some different types of shirts for the women like a nice little v-neck, posters, all of that. So make sure you go hit the link in the description of this video under Go Get Street Scores merch and you'll see the Day Nervous line. And again, it comes in all different types of things, different clothing items, different accessories, and each thing comes in different colors. So make sure you check out which colors you may want the most. Because just because you go there and you see it in a black shirt doesn't mean it only comes in a black shirt. It more likely comes in white, burgundy, gray, whatever. Same even goes for some of the accessories. While you're there, also, make sure you check out some of the newest stuff like the, the Red Wolves line I have going. And also, the Dwayne Haskins is the best quarterback in the NFC East line over there. Make sure you peep all of those and let me know if you buy one. You know what I'm saying? I'll shout you out and thank you and everything. Of course, during the live streams, during the game, you know I'm live streaming every game, every Sunday. We play the Cardinals at 4 p.m. this coming Sunday. When you're in the chat, just say you went and got one of them. I'll definitely shout you out and thank you. Now, for real. But now, let's get to the video, man. Let's get it. All right, so first of all, I'm going to break down Hakeem Butler in full detail. I'm going to do a quick synopsis of Jamar Smith, but everybody else I'm just going to name. So Washington will be working out multiple players, most of them receivers. We have Jeff Bidette from Oklahoma, wide receiver. We have Hakeem Butler, of course, from Iowa State, receiver. We have Courtney Davis, receiver from Texas A&M. Cody McElroy, receiver from Southeastern. And Dylan Mitchell, receiver from Oregon. We also have Timerick Hemingway, tight end from South Carolina. And lastly, we also have quarterback Jamar Smith from Louisiana Tech. Now to dive into Hakeem Butler. Just to go over some few notes I have from my own film session study I did on him. And before we even get to that, a little bit of a backstory as to how we even got here. I mean, why he's even available. He was drafted by the Cardinals, won your third overall. And a lot of people, including me, were confused as to how he even slid that far. I mean, I thought that was a super steal. But after a hand fracture and a missed rookie season due to that fracture, he is now a free agent. After only being with the Cardinals for one season, they released him even though he never had a chance to really show what he could do on the field. But the release makes sense overall for the Cardinals. First of all, they have so many good to great receivers already that he was just struggling to make the roster just off of that, especially since he was a raw route runner and he's not a great separator yet. And on top of that, he has inconsistent hands. And with him being raw, he is out of place on a team that actually looks primed to win now. They beat the 49ers who were just in the Super Bowl in a dog fight. Those are some clutch moments from them. That was a great win. The quarterback is a top five MVP candidate already. The defense is pretty good, but it's aging, especially cornerback Patrick Peterson. So they are probably in win now mode and can't wait on somebody like Hakeem Butler to develop. Also, the Cardinals are running a very fast paced offense and spreading defenses out. And people like Christian Kirk and Andy Isabella fit that profile very well. Definitely better than Hakeem as of today. And then plus D-Hop is great and fits into any offense no matter what you're trying to do. But I do feel sorry for Hakeem Butler because he fractured his hand and missed his entire rookie season. And then without having OTAs and mini camps due to COVID, he just wasn't even meant to make the Cardinals team, honestly. Andy Isabella and Keyshawn Johnson were able to get their rookie struggles out of the way early last season while the Cardinals weren't in win now mode. Last year they saw promise, but they weren't in a, you know, we're trying to run away with the division right now mode that's when they were making their mistakes but now you have Hakeem Butler who would have been making those mistakes this season while they're trying to take over the division 
Nicole Hakeem is still technically in his rookie season and without having OTAs in many camps. I mean, it's just dark. He just hasn't had the reps to improve. He is basically the same guy he was since getting drafted. And it got so bad, it's been reported that the Cardinals were relieved they could even place him on IR last season because he was just so inconsistent in 2019 training camp that they were scared they were going to have to release him anyway. But I definitely feel like a fresh start for him could possibly bring out that potential that he has. Which takes me to my next point, his strengths. First of all, size. Easy money. 6'5", 227 pounds. Enough said. Literally the same height as towering Chase Young. And to put it in perspective, he is four inches taller than Diha. Strength number two. With size, of course he's a huge target. Catch radius is crazy. The only receiver as tall as him on this team is Cam Sims, but Hakeem Butler is heavier and is able to box out receivers better. And remember, with how much people are waiting for Cam Sims to break out just because of his athleticism, Hakeem is even heavier and faster. And yes, he is taller than Antonio Gandy Golden. Also heavier and a little bit faster. But back to him being a huge target, he caught 17 of 30 contested catches during his final year of college. He has good body control in the air. He knows how to contort his body to bring in over the shoulder throws. He knows how to box out DBs in contested catch situations. I mean, he's just a good, dependable, big guy target. Like you would assume with the size he has. Also, number three, not slow somehow. I mean, at 6'5", 227 pounds, he ran a 4'4", 40 yard time, which is faster than Christian McCaffrey. Barely faster, but still, the fact that it's faster is crazy. And he didn't just test well with his speed. It actually shows on film. He can actually beat people deep. Of course, he's not Deshaun Jackson or Henry Ruggs, but he definitely has enough burn to pass DBs, especially when they're forced to be paranoid about his short and intermediate game because of his size. He has great build-up speed with long strides that can take the lid off defenses. He had eight touchdowns of 40-plus yards over the last two seasons for a reason. He has big play potential. Strength number four, great after the catch. He's really hard to bring down, very strong, extremely physical, and roughs people off of him like he's trying to score every play. Just ragdolls DBs trying to bring him down. I mean, he's just giving out piggyback rides. And don't sleep on his yards after catch quickness. Just because he is hard to bring down doesn't mean he's easy to get hands on in the first place. He actually has a nice arsenal of subtle moves to shift people and run by them. Like to put it in perspective, his yards after catchability is so good that he was given the ball in screen plays and was asked to make a play back in college. Number five, he has great toe tap and feet. He's able to make those difficult boundary sideline catches where you have to somehow tap both feet in bounds. He can do that. Strength number six, he has a lot of experience against press man. See, most receivers coming out of college don't really have to deal with press man much. So it's hard to project how they will fare at the NFL level where they have to deal with it a lot. But Hakeem Butler faced press man a lot. So over the years, he's learned how to beat it. Not only with athleticism, but with strategy. His release is pretty good. Maybe not as explosive as AGGs, but he can consistently beat press man jams with how physical he is at the line of scrimmage. Speaking of being physical at the line of scrimmage, his seventh strength is that he's a great blocker. Between his size and competitive drive, he is a dominant blocker against DBs. A sure blocker on the outside for a running back trying to stretch the defense. Trying to break something outside. And lastly, number eight, he's versatile. He has plenty of experience playing all over the field, both slot and outside. And like I said earlier, he can even get the ball off screens and make big plays from that, from the backfields. Scott Turner can really get creative with this guy. Now weaknesses. And it's not like a lot of different ones, but the weaknesses that he has are pretty glaring. Like, first of all, he lacks short area quickness. It's hard for him to separate from corners consistently. Number two, he doesn't run routes with NFL level nuance or burst on his breaks. Like, he takes extra steps to do things in his routes that shouldn't take as many steps as it takes him to do, which makes it easier for DBs to stay on him. Now, with his size and ability to box out DBs, he could still make plays but that won't work consistently at the NFL level and that requires a near perfect ball from the quarterback every time to make that work, especially at the NFL level. So he will have to become a way better route runner, which is definitely possible, but it's not there yet. Number three, he has a limited route tree. He doesn't have a lot of experience running a variety of routes on the route tree. Even though he has played everywhere, again, slot outside everywhere on the field, he just hasn't ran super complicated routes in a big variety of them. He just, you know, typically does the same routes from different parts of the field. And lastly, number four, 
and probably the thing that has me the most worried as of like right now and probably the biggest reason he didn't make the Cardinals team. He has inconsistent hands. He makes game changing, crazy spectacular catches at times, but also drops the easy routine ones. His hands have to improve and become more consistent. He'll catch a one handed catch over a DB one play, but then will drop an easy slant route that's wide open the next. He had 11 drops on 71 catchable passes last season, which is highly unacceptable. Now, if I were to give him a comp, if he can become a smarter, more disciplined, more nuanced route runner with better hands, he literally could be A.J. Green. Like, literally. A.J. Green, a Georgia Bulldog, of course, you know what I'm saying, was so effective when healthy because he not only had height, size, and speed like Akeem, but he also ran routes very well and was very nuanced with them. Now, he wasn't a great route runner, in my opinion, coming out of Georgia, but he really, really worked on it at the NFL level and became an even better route runner than he already kinda was and became uncoverable because of it. Hakeem has a longer way to go than AJ Green did coming out of college in comparison, but he can definitely still improve drastically if he puts in the work. If he can just get his hands together and become a better route runner, literally AJ Green, but like a healthier version. And in summary, he has immense potential. We could be getting AJ Green for free, but he's gonna take some time, some coaching, and it's gonna be a lot of hard work on his side. His potential is probably the highest out of anybody on this team, just based on athletic profile and his best plays and highlights, but he is inconsistent with his hands and his route running is in struggle mode right now. But at least he knows how to beat press man, which is something a lot of receivers never learn to do. He's pretty raw, but he's not like unplayable right now. And he has crazy upside and could be our substitute for Jamar Chase to throw out their opposite of Terry and Steven Sims if he's able to reach that potential. The likelihood of that happening is honestly not likely, but gotta call it like I see it, the potential is there. But that's enough of Hakeem Butler. Lastly, I just wanna talk about Jamar Smith real quick, the quarterback. And like I said earlier, I'm not gonna dive into the other guys we're bringing in for workouts, and I'm just gonna only do a quick summary of Jamar Smith real quick. First of all, he is six foot one, 218 pounds, and ran a 4-4-40 time. Dual threat, strong arm quarterback. In 2019, he threw 18 touchdowns and only five interceptions with 2,977 yards. And he also had 15 rushing touchdowns the past three seasons. But here comes the negatives. First of all, maturity and decision making is a small concern. In 2019, he was suspended for two games because of an athletic department violation, which may be why he went undrafted and ended up getting picked up by the Patriots, but then released already in 2020, just within one year. Also, quarterback-wise, he has poor pocket awareness, bad downfield vision, things that you need to be able to be a, at least a decent quarterback in this league. He has the athletic profile to do everything a quarterback needs to do, but he needs to learn all of the mental parts of the game. Accuracy, decision-making, field vision, pocket awareness. And those aren't easy things to learn at all. So this is a super to be determined type of guy. We'll get a good look at him next offseason during mini camps and all of that type of stuff if he's still on the team then. But as of right now, he is unplayable. We can't even expect him to be a backup quarterback at this point. But again, just like Akeem Butler, the potential there is immense. A lot of traits there, just like Akeem Butler, that you just can't teach. For Jamar Smith, it's the size arm strength speed for hakeem butler six foot five 227 faster than christian mccaffrey you can't teach that but both of them just need to learn how to play their respective positions way better smarter more disciplined all of that type of stuff but yeah man that's the end of this video man just wanted to announce who we're bringing in for workouts this week and wanted to break down the two most notable names out there especially hakeem butler who me and my boy rich really hope we would bring in to look at so I'm excited. I hope he makes it. I hope he proves himself, and I hope he develops. I really do. Hakeem Butler's ceiling is, bro, it's ridiculous, bro. It's sky high. Some people compare him to Brandon Marshall, who was a really good wide receiver. But honestly, if he would really, really reach the ceiling that he has, which isn't likely at all, it's actually quite unlikely, but if he can, he definitely has some AJ Green in him. And as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I love it. But that's the end of this video, man. Please like this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, please subscribe if you haven't. Definitely hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification every time I release a video like this, every time I schedule a live stream, every time I start up a live stream. And of course, shouts out to 
everybody supporting the channel, man. I really appreciate all y'all donations. Shout out to all my members, especially the Pro Bowl members whose names you see scrolling on the screen right now, man. Big shouts out to y'all. Again, like I always say, the money goes right back into the stream, so I really appreciate it. The stream's only going to get better and better over time. Better mic, better camera. I do want to get a better call-in system for the post-game live streams where y'all are able to call in and vent out y'all frustrations or praises for the team. All of that type of stuff. So, man, again, I really appreciate y'all. I'm waiting on NFL Game Pass to release this All-22 Coaches film so I can get this Chase Young, Antonio Gibson, and I'm thinking maybe a Troy Apke versus Cameron Curl film session done. I really want to get that to y'all, but NFL Game Pass is the one that's lacking, not me. So don't get mad at me. I'm waiting for the All-22 film, especially for people like Trey Apke and Cameron Curl who aren't on the camera at all times when we're looking at it the normal way we look at it, like the broadcast view, like during a live game. I need that all the way zoomed out view for them, so I'm waiting for NFL Game Pass to get me that. I don't know why they're slacking like this. It's been a whole day and a half, but it's whatever. When I get that, I'll get y'all these film sessions for them. I'm really excited about it too, man. Bye, y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.